Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Olivia was overjoyed in the kitchen of the quarter main home when Sam called to inform her Dante was awake. Olivia informed Lois, Rocco and Danny, who joined her to the hospital to see Dante. At the hospital, Elizabeth and a doctor informed Sam about Dante's health. When Sam entered Dante's room, she smiled warmly at him. Dante asked Sam to move closer to him. Dante expressed his affection for Sam in a faltering voice. Sam kissed Dante's forehead, and she leaned close to him. Sam gently caressed Dante's face in her hands. Moments later, a happy Olivia entered Dante's chamber, tears in her eyes, greeting him. Olivia informed Dante she loved him. Sam asked Elizabeth if she could let Rocco and Danny into the room, and she gladly consented. Shortly later, Rocco and Dante hugged. Rocco expressed how much he missed Dante, and they hugged. Danny said that he was relieved Dante was okay. Olivia persuaded Rocco and Danny to wait outside so Sam could have time alone with Dante. Dante asked Sam to phone Anna, who arrived shortly after. Anna grinned when she described Dante as her most prized detective. Anna and Dante had a pleasant reunion before the conversation shifted to Dante's shooting. When Anna asked if Dante remembered who had shot him, Dante insisted that Jason had not been the gunman. Dante said that Jason was the reason he was still alive. Elizabeth returned moments later to check on Sam. Elizabeth expressed her happiness for Sam and his family. Sam informed Elizabeth that Dante confirmed that Jason had not shot him. Elizabeth was relieved, and she predicted that Jake would be relieved to hear the news. Elizabeth spotted Danny and recognized him from Jason's arraignment. Danny stated that he believed Jason had not shot Dante. Elizabeth smiled and said Jason was fortunate to have Danny on his corner. Carly yelled at Sonny from his penthouse because he didn't believe Jason. They argued loudly. When Carly mentioned Michael, Sonny hinted that he disowned him. Sonny inquired as to who he should trust. Are you Carly? For all I know, you and Jason are working together, Sonny remarked, surprising Carly and Alva. At the same moment, Jason inquired in the penthouse hallway whether he may see Sonny. Frank extended a loving hand to Jason and welcomed him inside the apartment. As Jason entered, Carly huffed, wishing she had been secretly planning against Sonny rather than pining after Jason since 2021. Sonny caught sight of Jason and peered at him intently. Jason insisted he didn't shoot Dante. Carly gloated that she and Michael were responsible for Jason's release, and she resented Ava's presence in Sonny's home. Sonny questioned why he should believe Jason. Jason informed Sonny and Carly that he had been working as an informant for the FBI for almost two years. Sonny concluded that Jason was shielding someone and demanded to know who. Myself, Jason answered. Sonny was skeptical. Carly maintained a strong defense of Jason. She proceeded to shout at Sonny for not believing in Jason. When the dispute evolved into a yelling match, Alva urged that cooler heads prevail. Carly retaliated by shouting at Alva to shut up. Sonny defended Alva before admitting that he no longer trusted Carly or Jason. You're both traitors to me, Sonny yelled, and he told Carly and Jason to leave. We need to go, Jason said quietly to Carly. At Bobby's diner, Jason commended Carly on rebranding the establishment. They raised a toast to Bobby's memory. Carly expressed her happiness that Jason had returned and encouraged him to stay with her. Jason rebuffed Carly and agreed to reside in the room above the diner. Carly received a call from Anna, who informed her that Dante confirmed that Jason had not shot him. Carly and Jason exchanged hugs. Back in Sonny's apartment, Ava praised him for defending her from Carly's fury. You are welcome. I knew it would irritate her, Sonny remarked. Sonny stated that he couldn't believe he had ever loved Carly, and he remembered that Carly and Jason married in 2021, just months after Sonny was declared dead. As Sonny moved out of the room, Alva offered to pour him a drink. As Alva poured a drink, 
Sunny's phone chimed from a nearby chair. Irva gazed at the text message Olivia had sent to Sunny's phone. He is awake, Sunny. Dante got out of it. He's actually talking. Olivia's text was read. Irva gazed at the text, appearing to deliberate about something before moving the phone to a different area. When Sunny returned, Ava enthusiastically told him that she had contacted the hospital and discovered that Dante was awake. Sunny searched for his phone briefly, but Ava explained that Dante couldn't have visitors yet, so Sunny should try to rest. As he sat on a couch, Sunny announced that he had finally discovered the truth about Jason and Carly. Sunny urged Ava to join him on the sofa, and she quickly accepted. We can rejoice in the good fortune of my son, he remarked. Happy to, Ava said. Sonny joked that he had lost his best buddy while also reclaiming his son in a couple of hours. Ava assured Sonny that she was there for him, and he wrapped his arm around her shoulders. Sonny commented that it was amazing, because Ava was the only person who had been there for him. Sonny leaned in and kissed Ava. Sonny then stood up and wished Ava evening. In a jail transport vehicle on an unfamiliar stretch of roadway late at night, a driver transported John Brennan to an isolated place on the highway shoulder. The door opened and a man quickly entered. The individual was identified as Valentin. Valentin gladly welcomed Brennan as Jack. Moments later, it was revealed that Valentin and Brennan had been working together for years, and Valentin had replaced Brennan as the head of Pikeman. Brennan inquired as to what had gone wrong during the effort to remove Sonny. Valentin recalled that Jason had been assigned to the sniper team and that Jason had adopted the alias Alan Jacobs to conceal his real identity. Valentin suspected Jason had thwarted Sonny's assassination attempt. Brennan inquired about Valentin's efforts to fix their attempt to eliminate Sonny, as well as what would happen if Jason turned over Pikeman to the authorities. Could he know that you've been running the company since my arrest? Brennan questioned Valentin, who smirked slightly. Valentin joked that Brennan had become sloppy after fraternizing with Carly months ago. Brennan inquired as to what Sonny knew about the attempt on his life. Well, he knows enough not to display his face where we can get a good look at him. I've left some crumbs and disinformation. He believes he is being pursued by a strange enemy named Stone. There have been way too many misfires, Jack. That has to change now. Sonny Corinthos has a firm grip on Port Charles. And if he isn't willing to do business with us, we need him gone, Valentin stated forcefully. Brennan inquired as to Valentin's strategy for defeating Sonny. Valentin shook his head slowly. We do not. Sonny does it for us, Valentin explained. Valentin remarked that Sonny had bipolar disorder and had been taking medication for several years. Valentin stated that he had contacted Sonny's source for drugs. Let's just assume we have reached an arrangement. He'll fill Sonny's prescription with one quarter's strength and three quarters placebo. Sonny will become more unpredictable and paranoid. Valentin remarked firmly, removing him will be easy. Valentin noted that Sonny had already been derailed in recent months, referring to the pounding Sonny had given Cyrus. Brennan claimed that Valentin was still evil, and then inquired about Anna. Brennan smirked, knowing Valentin had persuaded Anna to love him, only for their relationship to go up in smoke. Valentin had a warning for Brennan. If Anna discovers my involvement with Pikeman, this van will be the last you see outside prison walls, Valentin warned before exiting the van. Brennan then opened up about his relationship with Valentin as the van drove back to Statesville, we worked together to build the business. Unlike many in our field, we were never strong believers in anything other than getting the job done. Pragmatists. That's why we got to the top together. Brennan explained. When the van returned to Statesville, the driver exited to open the door for Brennan. The driver utilized sign language to communicate with Brennan. Valentin. Val, Val, Val. Damn you're good, Brennan commented. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.